In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Friends present at home, either on uh, YouTube or on channel C31, welcome to this beginning of our Holy Week, the great week of our church year. Here in St. Patrick's Cathedral, we will celebrate the great mystery of the Lord's passion, death and resurrection over this week. And for all of us, we have this opportunity to participate, to make that journey with the Lord, that we might make that journey into his life, death and resurrection. In this most unusual circumstances of this year, in which you are unable to be physically present. Nonetheless, you are present, and I want to assure you of that. You are present in our gathering, in prayer, in worship, and with one another, if not physically, nonetheless spiritually. And so, dear friends, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we come together in this unusual way, nonetheless, to herald with the whole church throughout the world, the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And I will now bless the palm branches that are here in front of me, but I also invite you, if you have been able to uh, obtain a branch from your own gardens, to now have those ready for this blessing I extend to those as well. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Sanctify these branches with your blessing. That we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Sion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt, and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. 
Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road and cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when they entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear friends, like the crowd who acclaimed Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ the Lord. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, 
to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself. 
to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, <clears throat> Do you not hear? How many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now at festival time, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today, I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do? with Jesus, who is called the Christ. All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put
put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him, mocking him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they would crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. <coughs> over his head, they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now. And we who believe in him, he trusts in God, that God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, <coughs> Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran out and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again, with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. The last earthly days of Jesus were deeply chaotic. In the space of perhaps no more than a week, we move with Jesus from triumph to tragedy, from ongoing mission to finality, from a sense of purpose to an overwhelming storm. Disruption in the temple teachings that stirred up the crowds, betrayals at the Last Supper, military seizure in a garden of peace, show trials and further betrayals, condemnation and torture, hostility, bewilderment and anguish, and finally, death. Each moment tumbles over the other towards that most climatic of endings. In the midst of this chaos stands Jesus, the still point in the storm. He knows and allows what is happening while all others around him are thrown into disarray. His actions are calm and considered, while bloodlust and panic grip the people. He intentionally steps forward towards his death, knowing that this is precisely the path to be taken in a world that had lost its way. Calm amidst chaos, purpose amidst panic, trust amidst fear. To the very end of his earthly life, Jesus showed how to live the fullness of our humanity with a body broken on a cross so that our broken lives might find a way back to their original fullness in and through his body. Through the chaotic chronology of those last days of his earthly life, Jesus manifested a kairos moment, a living for us the appointed time of God's decisive action among us. In this disorienting time of coronavirus, which is imposing such immense change on our lives, are we not being called back to trust in what matters? Is it not our time to find the Kairos moment in the chronologies of our lives? Our optimism for technologically enhanced lifestyles and unfettered progression have proved to be woefully fragile and inadequate in the face of this world engulfing contagion. simpler realities, less optioned lifestyles, greater stewardship of one another and of our common home, 
more intentional relationships. These seem to be the locations in which we will find ourselves once more. Similarly, gestures of tenderness and closeness, courageous signs of service and care, witnesses to trust and hope. These are the signs of our stillness in the storm. In each one of these locations and signs, and to the extent that we might trustingly embrace them, we will find there the already present God in his son Jesus, ready to walk with us out of this present chaos, ready to teach us again the way of trust, ready to die for us, that we might have life. It is in the image of a body broken on a cross that might best reorient us in a life-sustaining direction at this time of chaos and fear. For this broken body is an image and a path to follow that does not deny death, but which transfigures that which is death-dealing in our lives. In this one man, in truth the Son of God, we find hope and purpose and life. So let us turn to him in our chaos and fear, trusting that this Son of God, one of us, has already walked the path we need to follow through our present crisis. Let us trust that by his wounds we may be healed. And so may the crucified and risen Christ be our hope and our peace in the midst of this storm. So let us stand to profess our faith today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United with Christ, we cry out to God in this Holy Week for harmony, for reconciliation, and for the healing of the world's wounds. We pray for Pope Francis and all the bishops of the Church. May they be inspired by the example of the suffering servant to continue in their mission to call Christians to a sense of service to others. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for support for Project Compassion. May we all respond to the call to reach out to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are infected by coronavirus and those who care for them, that sickness, fear, and societal disorder may be avoided. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as we journey with Jesus during his passion and death. May we come to a deeper understanding and acceptance of what that means for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering that they may be healed. We pray for those who have died recently, especially Severino Simon, and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they rest in peace with Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite you now to join with me in praying the prayer to St. Joseph during this time for our cities and suburbs, for all our people. St. Joseph, you were receptive to God's working in your life. Help us by our, your prayers at this time of trial. Came to Jesus and Mary under your watchful care. May your prayers assist our local church to respond to those in need. You taught the Christ child your trade in prayers. Help us to follow his example of love. You are part of God's plan for all humanity. Assist us to be vigilant and responsible this day. You spent your life in service. May we be mindful of others, particularly the elderly and vulnerable, caring for them in these difficult times. You trusted in the clear privacy of God over all history and every situation. Help us to grow in faith and pray to the Father, thy will. God of compassion, speak to those whose needs we entrust to you this day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice and your hands. Pray for our glory and glory. For our God and the Holy Spirit. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Patrick, Mary of the Cross, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter Bishop, his assistant bishops, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we help to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with, with him, him and in him, him and God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us turn to one another and offer a gesture of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord have mercy on me, and grant me the grace of the word in my soul. you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, Jesus I believe, believe that, that you are present, present in the most, most holy sacrament. sacrament. I, love I love you above all things, things and, and I, I desire to receive you into my soul. soul. Since, Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, a, a few words, the parish notices, I suppose, uh, on this Palm Sunday. Um, we will be live streaming and broadcasting on C31 um, all of this week um, of Holy Week. So. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, Mass at 1 uh, p.m. Uh, Thursday, uh, Mass of the Lord's Supper at 7.30 in the evening. On Friday, we will live stream only the Stations of the Cross at 11 a.m. And we will live stream and uh, C31 for the 3 o'clock Passion. On Easter Saturday, we have um, the vigil at 7.30 p.m. And on next Sunday, Easter Sunday, Mass will be at 11 a.m. as it is today. Now, a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, um, his father was ancient. He was in his 90s. And Alf went to Mass every day down the road at the local convent where he had lunch with it was an old people's home, and he had lunch afterwards. But Alf never went to Mass on Sunday. And we asked Alf one day, Alf, why don't you go to Mass on Sunday? He said, oh, I wouldn't be going on Sunday. They'd take up a collection. So none of this comes easily. Um, we're all conscious of the financial constraints that our situation that we find ourselves in has brought upon us. And um, many parishes... Um, and presbytery incomes, there is nothing coming in. So the Catholic Development Fund, in association with the um, IT department here at the Archdiocese, are developing um, a giving opportunity which will come online this week. So if you want to contribute to your local parishes, there'll be a way of doing that by going on to the diocesan website. Uh, that's cam.org.au. It'll be up and running sometime this week. We're not sure exactly when, uh, but it is coming. A number of people have contacted parishes and the cathedral asking if there's a way that they can give to support the, um, the live streaming and the, um, and the costs associated with televising the masses and the Easter ceremonies. So you're most welcome to give, um, and we will be um, launching that this week. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll probably be able to tell you more during the week. Thank you very much, and we continue to pray for each other at this most challenging time. Thank you. So let us stand for the blessings. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty 
mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you.